Hey folks, we are live. All right, so let's do it. Uh, of course, it's live streaming, and then I hear myself. So why is my audio getting picked up? Okay. Yeah, yeah, no, I know. I'm not. Uh, the stream yard seems to be, yeah. Actually, I'm going to take a moment. To hear anything actually, so it's all good. I uh, don't have a guest. Uh, I'll worry about the the double later. Cool, cool. All right. So yeah, uh, my name is Nick Taylor. I'm the host today for CFE.dev. This is a first of a monthly stream that we're trying out. I'm super excited about it. I uh, just want to thank. Uh, Brian Rinaldi, who's in the chat there, for uh, inviting me on. I'm super excited to do this. So uh, a bit about myself. Uh, I'm Nick Taylor, like you can see. I'm a staff engineer over at Netlify. And uh, if you want to find places where I am on the internet, uh, I just dropped a, a link here. That's my website. So that's got my blogging, my streaming, socials, and all that. And uh, I also stream on Twitch uh, at nicky.live. I'll drop that in the chat as well. Um, so feel free to give a follow there. Uh, and also, if you're not following uh, cfb.dev yet, uh, please give them a follow. Cool, cool. So let's go straight into live coding view here. I think. So let's just then, uh, bring this in. Do -do -do. Also, my first time using StreamYard, so it might be a little funky. Um, not StreamYard myself. All right, so we're going to go over a few things today here. Um, there's been many times where I've been speaking with developers, and they're unaware of some debugging tools uh, that you have access to. So I kind of want to go through those today. Um, if you're new to web development, a lot of this might be new to you. Um, if you've been doing this for a while, you, you might be super familiar with like console.log and other console methods, um, but there's a lot of other things. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to first start off with just some console logging. And uh, if you already know this stuff, you know, we'll, we'll go through it fairly quickly. Um, this is a live stream, I'm live coding. So uh, just like on Twitch, uh, feel free to ask questions in the chat whenever you want to. Uh, I'm checking it pretty frequently, so happy to answer your questions there. Okay, so I'm just going to go to my VS Code here. And I'm just going to zoom in a bit here so folks can see. And we're going to start off with logging here. So you see right here, what it, it doesn't matter what we're developing in right now. I have created a, a React app using Beat here. So this is the template from Beat. And this app runs, so like if I come back to the website here, you see this is just the standard React site uh, that you get when you first set it up. And if I click on here, you see it's counting and stuff. Uh, that's pretty, I haven't touched anything in here. So let's open up the dev tools. Now, if you've never used the dev tools before, there's a few shortcuts you can use. I usually use uh, command shift I because I'm on Mac, but if you're on Windows or Linux, it's control shift I. And, and depending on the browser you use, you can use the F12 key as well. So let's go to the console here and let's clear this. And if we come back here, you can see that I've added this console log here. I'm just going to shrink a few things down here. So you can see console.log, uh, I've added this. This is when the, uh, anytime the app renders. So we have some React Steve here. So this app will re-render every time you click the button to do the counter. Again, that's not the point of the stream, but that's, that's just how React works. Um, oh, hey, Caitlin. Yeah, uh, uh, you're saying I'm definitely guilty of over-relying on console logs. Looking forward to learning. That's awesome. Um, there's nothing, the first thing I'll say, I'm glad you wrote that, is um, 
it's not bad that you're using console log. The the way I typically use console log or the other console methods is if I kind of know what the code is doing already. Yeah, I'll zoom in one more, Brian. If, there you go. Uh, cool. Uh, yeah, that should be okay now, Brian. Yeah, I typically use console log methods when, um, you know, I'm pretty familiar with the code at this point. And so it's just really, I want to see did it hit this part of the code. And then, you know, I'll go see if it did or whatever I'm outputting in the console log. Um, when I don't know what's going on in an app or it's the first time I use it, I'll probably lean towards the JavaScript debugger, which we'll get into after. But uh, I just want to come back here. And so I'm going to click on here. You saw I added that console log. So actually, I can zoom in this too. Let's do that. OK. Um, so you can see here, I just keep clicking, and you see the count is added there. Um, let's just remove that. OK. Cool. Nothing out of the ordinary here. OK. Now, one thing, like to your point, Caitlin, is like when you write these console logs everywhere, uh, it might not be super, you know, your it pollutes your code a little bit sometimes. You know, like maybe you add them in temporarily, and they're like, okay, uh, I've got this working. I'm gonna create my pull request. So I gotta remove all those logs first. Um, there are valid reasons to have log console logs in your code uh, sometimes, but typically, if you're debugging, you usually take them out after. So what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna come here. And come back to uh, VS Code here. I'm going to get rid of the log. So I'm just going to put it back to what it was. Uh, cool. And there we go. And then let's clear this. And so we don't have a console log anymore. And what I'm going to do is uh, you can actually look at files in the dev tool. So like you're familiar with like VS Code or other browsers, um, you know, uh, you can use Command P as long as you have focus in the Dev Tools. And you, of course, this is what I always do. I end up pressing Print. Um, so if you press Command P, you can start looking for files. So I'm going to type app.jsx, which is the file we were working in, and basically I'm going to add a log in here, but I'm not writing in the what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say, let's go right here. Uh, I can't zoom in this part, but I'm going to say add a log point. And what a log point is, is it's like a console log, but it's something that you set up in the dev tools. Um, let's do a refresh if you can. Oh, hey, Rico. Yeah, everything all good now? Just seeing in the chat there. Um, so this is literally the same thing as doing a console log, but instead of writing this in your code, uh, if you have the dev tools open, you can just add logging here. So I can say, hello, Caitlin, for example, and I'll just press enter. Now you're going to see here, there's this pink, almost looks like a sticky loop. Now I'm going to come back to the console over here. And, and now when I click on the count, the app re-renders as it's because it's React. That's just how it works. And you're going to see every time I click it, it's saying, hello, Caitlin. Now, the nice thing about these log points is what I was just mentioning is you don't necessarily have to add these console logs to the code. So if you're debugging something and trying to figure out stuff, I personally find log points great for that, um, which is super cool. Um, OK, so we have that now, and we've got console log. There's other logging methods. Like you can do console.table and console.dir for like objects and stuff. Uh, oh, that's weird. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure why 15 people were waiting. But uh, yeah, the stream is live. So glad you're, glad you're here now. Hopefully some other people are too, uh, those other 14. Um, so yeah, to, to reiterate, the log points are great when you want to do logging, but you don't want to necessarily put your actual source code. So I highly recommend checking them out. This is a feature that was created by VS Code. And VS Code is an Electron app. And uh, so it uses uh, Chromium under the hood, which is what I'm in. I'm in Arc right now, which is 
Chromium based browser, but like Google Chrome and all those. And so basically log points came from VS Code and got introduced into all the browsers. So that's pretty cool, I think. Um, okay, I'm gonna remove this now and come back here. I start clicking, you see there's no, like, uh, let me clear it. If I start clicking now, I no longer see Hello Caitlin and the code hasn't changed. So that's great. Okay, so we're gonna look into uh, debugging and code now. And what I mean there is like debugging is like the concept of, you know, you're trying to figure out a bug because, uh, but there's something in JavaScript that is literally debugger. You can essentially stop in a program, you can see what's going on, you can inspect things, um, and then you can continue. And this is super helpful, uh, kind of like I was saying initially, where when I'm not really sure like what's going on, or it's like maybe it's the first time I'm onboarding at a company and they're like, here's the app, here's a bug that we'd like you to work on. And I have no idea what's going on. I'll typically lean towards the debugger. Uh, I'll still use some console logging for sure, but this will help me get through things. So again, if I come back here, press press command P. I'm gonna look for that file app.jsx. And I'm just gonna give it most of the screen real estate because uh, basically let me close this just because I'm on the wide screen. So I wanna make sure everybody can see here. So it doesn't matter what the app is up here in, in the actual web browser window. Um, so you can see here, I've got my file again. And so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna click on the numbers here on the side. These are the, the line numbers of the file. And I'm gonna click on number nine here, for example. You're gonna see that it goes blue. Uh, it might be a different color in Firefox. I can't remember uh, if you're in VS Code. I think it's blue as well, or it, it might be yellow. But um, anyways, I'm gonna refresh the app now. And then all of a sudden, you're gonna see if I just scroll up for a sec, uh, the app isn't loaded yet. I can't zoom this in, unfortunately, but the, the browser is actually saying paused in the de debugger, that little yellow line you see up top. And it's paused because uh, I'm in the debugger now. Because I said, okay, when the program starts to run and the website loads, I want you to stop on this line. So that's exactly what's happened. And now once I'm here, I can kind of inspect stuff now. Uh, these things, I can't zoom in the popovers, but I think they zoom in. Um, but you can see all of a sudden you can start inspecting things. You can see, okay, this uh, use state, which is uh, a primitive in React. Again, you don't need to know React for the purpose of this, but uh, it gives you an array uh, or a tuple where it's got a count and a set count. Set counts what increments the count when we're clicking the button in the app, and the count is the value that it currently is. So already, we can see, okay, the count is zero. And then let's just continue here. So um, you can click, there's a play button, but I use my function key. So uh, I'll press F8 to do this, to continue. And it runs. And now if I just bring this down, you're gonna see the count is zero. Now I'm gonna click again, it's gonna stop. We're gonna see the count is one now. Uh, nothing mind blowing about the app happening here, but you can see the count again. And then we can inspect other things here. Uh, I'll see if I can show this. Uh, I might need to zoom down. Oh yeah, it's down here. Okay, so we're paused in the program and there's other things in here. Uh, we might not be able to get to all of it today, but we can see here what's called the scope. We can see everything that's available currently running in JavaScript here or in, in our app. We can see here the counts one, there's this function. There's some other things here. These, these things aren't as important right now. This is just stuff from React and Beat. But the main point here is you can actually see things here uh, in terms of inspecting the application, what's going on, the state it's in. Um, you can see the globals as well. So again, there's some stuff here from Beat and React. But uh, there's also stuff like local storage, for example, which is in the browser in, on the global window. So these are just some other things you can see. Um, I'm just going to bring this back down again. Okay, so it's pretty boring right now. 
stop the debugger and it says count is one. So let's let this continue. It does it twice this is something when you're running React in developer mode, so it's not a bug. Um, OK, so the count's one. We could click the button again, and we'll see it go to two now. But you know, let's do something more interesting. So we already have these breakpoints. So we already know we can stop the program in a particular place. Um, if you right click on the uh, breakpoint that we've added, the, the blue kind of sticky note here, this part I can't zoom in because it's the native operating system, but it's got a context underneath where you can remove the breakpoint, you can edit it, disable it. Disabling it is another thing, like say temporarily, I just want to stop there and I'll click on the counter and you see it's not hitting there. So that's one thing. Um, the next thing we can do is if I re-enable it, we can say edit the breakpoint. And this you should be able to see because it's zoomed in. And so we have a few options here. We have breakpoint, which is what it is currently. We have conditional breakpoint and we have log point. We already saw what log point was, which was just logging console logs, but just only when the dev tools are open. But there's this new one here called conditional breakpoint. So we could do something here like, uh, I don't know, let's say, I'll, I'll say, uh, I'm going to create some variable for some reason, but uh, I'll just say, I don't know, uh, Nick was here equals one, okay. And you're going to see all of a sudden the uh, debugger, hey, how's it going, Chuckie? Hey, I'm guessing that's Stefan Judas there too, maybe? How you doing? Um, so you can see now that breakpoint is this orange color, and it's got a question mark, and that's because it's conditional breakpoint. Uh, I'm just going to go edit it for a second so I can get this variable now. And I'm going to come in with dev tools. And if we go back to the console, and I'm just going to create this global variable. So I'm just going to say uh, var Nick was here. I'm going to say equals zero. Okay. Nothing special going on so far. And if we look at the breakpoint again here, we're going to say if Nick was here equals one, that's when we want to actually stop. Hey, Stefan. Um, for folks in the chat, I got to see uh, Stefan in person last week, so I was super excited about that. OK, so we've got our conditional breakpoint here. And I'm clicking around, and nothing's happening. So now let's come back into the console here. And I'm going to say Nick was here, and I'm going to set it to 1. And we'll come back to the sources here. And I'm going to click here. And then all of a sudden, you see that the breakpoint has stopped. Yeah, no, it was great to catch us. Time. So the reason why it stopped uh, it's not obvious yet is because the variable Nick was here is equal to one now. Uh, this is super useful for when, uh, oh yeah, Caitlin's comments still show it. That's, that's me, uh, let me hide that. That's me getting used to StreamYard. Thank, <laughs> thank you, Brian. Um, yeah, so like you saw, we were able to stop only when a certification was uh, happening. And this is super useful. And like this has happened before when I'm like looping through something that's happened in React. Like, I don't know, maybe I want to see, like, as we're mapping over things, stop when like, the key or, or some variable is equal to something. And that's the only time I want to stop because without having a condition breakpoint, what happens is you have a breakpoint like this. And it's like every time you try to go through things, it just keeps doing it and doing it. And it just takes a lot longer. So like, think of like this is a terrible example, but imagine you were looping through something a thousand times, and you really only wanted to see what happens to the current state of the program when it's at nine hundred and ninety-nine. You ideally don't really want to have to press, uh, you know, continue, continue nine hundred and ninety-nine times. So the conditional breakpoints are really great for that. Um, okay, so let's. Let this go. I'm just going to let it continue. And again, there's arrows for um, for using the debugger. You can see them here. There's like uh, it's it's not here right now, but um, this will turn into a play button. This means you step over something. Uh, again, the tooltip showing. Uh, I can't zoom those in, unfortunately. But these are basically buttons that you can use to step through the code. 
And um, I typically don't use those. I use my function keys. And if you're on a Mac, you can set your keyboard to use the function keys by default because otherwise they end up being, uh, you know, like your volume and stuff. But, uh, you know, everybody does their things differently, but I prefer to use the function keys when debugging. Okay, cool. So we've seen breakpoints, we've seen log points, console logging, conditional breakpoints. Now, there's another way you can actually uh, get the debugger to stop. So let me come back here. Just one sec. Come back into code. There's this keyword called debugger. So I can put it, uh, uh, I'll put it in the app. Uh, this keyword has been around since the beginning of JavaScript, as far as I know, because I was using this back in the late 90s. Um, so, okay, the reason why it's, if you see that like red error, this is a ESLint error. Uh, it's just saying you're not allowed debuggers in the code. This is just so somebody doesn't accidentally commit this. But for the purposes of what I'm demonstrating here, this is another way that you can actually get the debugger to work. So you can see here, uh, the app is refreshing automatically because it's feet and React. But you can see right away, it went to go load the app, and then it stopped right here. So I don't have a breakpoint like, uh, like I did previously like, uh, like this. It's just the literal keyword debugger. And this says, stop the program right here. Um, I typically don't use this, but there are weird scenarios where I technically can't explain why it happens, but sometimes like I can't get the breakpoint to, to get hit, like it won't stop there. Uh, again, I don't have a technical reason why that happens, but sometimes if that's happening, I'll put an explicit debugger so I can just kind of get into the code and then start stepping through things. Um, so yeah, so there's that. Uh, just doing a time check. Okay, yeah, well, we're pretty good. Just gonna take a sip of coffee. Uh, and again, if you have questions in the chat, feel free to uh, drop them. Uh, don't worry about interrupting. Uh, super used to just answering questions as I'm doing things. Okay, and then so you can see here, I'm gonna use the uh, F10 key here, but it's the same thing as these buttons down here. Or I'll click the button just to show you. If I click the down arrow, it's gonna go to the next piece of code and so on and so on. And so this is handy. So like once you're like, okay, stop here, you don't necessarily want to say, hey, run everything again. So you could, but you might be like, okay, I'm at the point where I want to start checking out things. So then you can just start going bit by bit by stepping, as it's called, uh, you're stepping into things. You can also step over things. So stepping over is different in the sense that like, say there's a function here, or actually I can shrink that, let's do this. Uh, Let's go back to the code here. I'm, I'm just going to create a function here and say hello. Or actually, it's not a J. It's not a React component. It's just a function. And we're just going to say console.log hello. Thank you, Copilot. OK. And I'm going to put it just below the debugger. And we're going to come back to the editor. Uh, okay, and I'm just gonna let the, the debugger run again. And like I was saying, you can see the the button here. It's like a play button. Uh, I again, I use the function keys, but you can press the play button here, and it's gonna run again. Uh, again, like I mentioned, this is a React app in developer mode, so it runs twice. Um, but now let's see. We've got this hello function. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna refresh the page. We've got the debugger again. And I'm going to step down to the next piece of code. So you're going to see here, it comes on to the hello. And again, just talking about things here, you should be able, you can always use the scope here. Um, there's also watch where you can add stuff. Like you can, uh, I don't know, you could like look at window.local location or locations, good one, dot href maybe. Whoops. This is another part of the debugging tools where you can actually see, okay, well, what is the, what is the location href? 
And these are things you can add. So as you're debugging and it stops, the watches will apply to whatever you're currently looking at. So in my case, there's only one page right now, but I can see what the URL is. Um, that's just another thing. But what I wanted to show is, okay, so we have this hello. We know it's going to console log. So if I press F10, it just went to the next line. And if we go to the console, you're going to see it said hello, which is expected. Now I'm going to let it run again. Okay, now we're back. And I'm going to step back to the hello again. But instead of stepping over, and think of it literally as stepping over a thing instead of stepping into it. So now I'm going to step in. And you want to step into things when you want to see what's going on in a function or, or something. So I'm going to step in now. And then all of a sudden, you're going to see I'm in the hello function. And this is the code is, uh, this is compiling it to something else. but. This is console log essentially, but you can see here I stepped into the code as opposed to stepping over it. You know, sometimes when I know a function is doing something already and it's fine, you don't want to step into it, so you just step over. Uh, okay, so we'll let that run again. So there's that as well. Uh, again, if you have questions, uh, go for it. Okay, so this is all great, and. We're in the browser and we've been debugging from end code. We're going to kind of take a step back now and we're going to go to here, stop the project. And I'm just going to create a new file. I'm going to call it index.js and save it. And this is going to be a Node.js file now. So I don't know, let's say let count equals zero. Trivial example I know, but um, you know, for demonstration purposes, it does the job. And then you can say console.log count. And let's just say that. Okay, nothing fancy going on here. Now if I want to run this, I'm gonna say node index.js. And you're gonna see in my terminal down below, which I'll bump up one more. If I run it, you can see it console logged out the count. Um, you know, and just to show if I change that to four and run it again, you can see that. Okay, that's great. Um, but what happens if I need to debug this? So the neat thing is, so Chromium-based browsers like Google Chrome or like uh, the new Microsoft Edge and all that, they're using a, a JavaScript engine called V8. Uh, you may or may not have heard of that, but um, if V8 is also what Node.js is built with. So basically, you, the same engine that's running in the browser is what is used to run Node.js. And this is important because I'm going to show you how to debug that in Node.js. So and again, all the other things I mentioned before, like so logs and all that, that's all, you can use all that stuff in Node.js too, including the log base. So I'm gonna say node, node, uh, sorry, node, node, dash, dash, inspect, dash, brk. And what this means is I wanna inspect as in debug and the brk, BRK just means I wanna stop immediately. Uh, and I'm gonna pass the file name. Okay, so now you're gonna see this message. Yeah, you should be able to see that. I can see it on the screen. Um, you're gonna see that it says uh, debugger listing on some WebSocket port, uh, this long URL. Okay, that's not really helpful to us, but let's go back to our browser. Let me clear this. Now, you might not have noticed this, but all of a sudden there's this green Node.js uh, icon here. I'm gonna click it. It's going to open up the browser dev tools. And all of a sudden, I have the same browser tools that I use for debugging. I can use those to debug Node.js. Um, the first time I did this, uh, I was like, holy cow, that's like pretty cool. So the reason why it's cool is because 
we have editors and stuff, but like at the time, like you could literally write Node.js programs and your editor could be like some kind of just notepad equivalent and you could actually use the browser and you could. So now I have literally all the same tools I did before. So I can step in the code and then, you know, it can console log and um, here you'll see a console log before. Uh, so for me, at least, I find that super cool. Um, maybe you do too, who knows? Um, and so you can do all the other things too. Like I was mentioning, you can add a breakpoint, you can do a log point just to, let's, let's just do that for fun. So let's add a breakpoint and let's change it to a log point. Let's just say hello, enter, and then let's press, uh, the, let's continue here. Okay, my program is, okay, my program finished running. Um, so the debugger stopped, but let's try it again. And if I come back here, okay, you're gonna see if I run this, it's gonna console log the camp again, but it should also log YOLO. And it did. Uh, yeah, no, that. Uh, yeah, there, there's a there's a lot of things, honestly, in debugging, and it's it's understandable, especially if you're starting out with web development. Like, especially modern web development, there is so much to learn these days. So, um, but but a lot of these tools have been around for a long time. It's just they're surfaced a lot better in, in editors now. Which, uh, which we'll get to in a minute. I'm going to show you how you can debug code in Node.js next. Um, so, yeah, these things, like, just for some historical context, like, uh, I used to work in Microsoft Tech, so, like, .NET, and even before that, and Visual Studio, not Visual Studio, but Visual Studio and its predecessor, you could actually use the debugger in everything in... Uh, in in those editors, so like you could actually debug an Internet Explorer page. I'm dating myself here, but you could actually stop the code like I've been showing you here in Visual Studio or Visual Studio.net and do all these same things. So these things have been around for a long time. Uh, when the Mozilla browser, or previously Netscape, and then it became a Mozilla browser and it's Firefox, there were some tools that came out initially called Firebug. Um, Shout out to Firebug, it's a great project. It's no longer required, but you could do all these things I'm showing you now. And um, yeah, basically, uh, as the tools got better, the like the dev, dev tooling in general has gotten like so good. Like I know people like to complain about things, but for me, uh, I find the web dev tooling space right now is pretty amazing. Um, and there's there's a lot of stuff like we, we might not even get to today but um but getting back to node here so we've been doing node.js debugging in the browser tools which again i think is pretty neat okay that's cool but like i'm a fan of VS code or maybe you're a fan of whatever editor you use you know like uh, JetBrains, webstorm or whatever and they all have uh debugging capabilities to uh in all their in all their editors now, so like, um, you know, so I'm gonna go and show you in VS Code, but like, like I said, if you're using WebStorm or something, a quick Google will probably show you like how to debug Node.js in uh, WebStorm, for example, and it might even be set up automatically. Um, okay, just gotta take a sip of coffee here. If uh, if I look like I'm melting on stream, it's because I am. <laughs> there's, unfortunately, it had some flooding in my basement last week, and it was like this industrial uh, dehumidifier in my basement, and it's causing so much heat. So like even with fans on, it, I feel like my face is melting. So uh, I might have to do this occasionally. So anyways, uh, it's not me putting on tons of suntan lotion or whatever. Okay. So let's come back here into VS Code and let's just maybe just add some more stuff here. Uh, I'm being lazy, so I'm just gonna use Copilot, create a loop so we can see the debugger in action. Sure. 
Thanks, cool pilot. Perfect. Okay. Uh, okay, yeah, sorry. Yeah, in VS Code, the debugger uh, breakpoints are different. There are red dots everywhere. Sorry. So you can see here, I'll put one here. And okay. now the first thing you're going to do is in VS Code, uh, if you press Command Shift D or Control Shift D, it's going to open up this debugger panel. So I'm going to say uh, run and debug. I'm going to choose Node.js. And all of a sudden, I'm in VS Code. I'm able to debug things here. And again, it's not the browser dev tools, but you literally have all the same things. So this breakpoint here, it stopped. Um, let's come here, and I'm going to say edit breakpoint. And it's going to look exactly like before. So I'm going to say log message, which is the log point. And I'm going to say hello. And they have different symbols in VS Code. So a log point is a red diamond, I guess. And uh, a breakpoint is just, it's kind of like a, a, say, like mustard yellow color, I guess. I don't know. Um, but let's let it run. And now, the thing is, if you're debugging with VS Code, see up top here, there's this, uh, this toolbar you can move around. And this has got the play button, the step into, step over, step out of um, the, the recycle thing here. That means just restart the debug process. So it just kind of restarts the program. Um, so you can use those. But again, I like using the F keys. The only difference is when you're in VS Code, and you can, like any editor, change your keys to map to whatever. But I like the function keys for the debugging. So it's the same thing. So like if I press F10, it's going to go to the next line and so on. The only difference is when you press, uh, like we were in the browser before, you can press the play button, you can press the F8 key, which would continue the debugger. In VS Code, it's F5, and it's probably like that because in Visual Studio and Visual Studio.net, it was F5 and it still is, I believe. So that's a subtle difference, but anyways. I'm going to press five and continue. Uh, there we go. And you're going to see, uh, I have my screen in quite a bit. So that's why it's, uh, it's a little busy in here. But if I open up the dev tool down here, uh, sorry, the terminal, you're going to see it already in my log point. It said YOLO. Um, it also calls log before of. And now I'm just in the loop here. And again, you have access to all the things I was mentioning before. So you can see all the variables here. Uh, yeah, the, the, the debug, the, I don't know, you get used to it. But yeah, it's depending on how often you do it. Yeah, it might be like, uh, what's that thing again? What's that P or, or even the buttons and stuff? But, uh, but um, yeah, getting back to the side panel. I'm just going to move the, this toolbar over. You're going to see this is kind of like what I was showing you before. So it's like the current scope, like where you are in the program. It shows you all the variables here. So the I, which is the counter in the loop, is set to zero. The count is four. Um, this is undefined. That's just the window. Uh, or sorry, the no, there's just nothing defined there right now. And you have access to all your globals, kind of like I was showing you before. A lot of these things. Node.js stuff now, so like don't really need to look into them, but there are things in there. So you can see like fetch is there, for example. Um, if you had both stuff, you could put it in there. Um, I can come here, I can add watches, so I can say like account, it'll show it, but I could do other things. I could say count times two, uh, you know, it'll show eight. So like you can even test out stuff. Like, you can always use the the console too. So like in VS Code, it's called the debug console if I come over here. So I can just say console blog, hey friends. And this is kind of like you're in the browser dev tools console. Same idea. Uh, I have things all observed in here, so it's a little tight for me, but I'll come back to the terminal and you can see that there. Now, the other thing which is, uh, it's in the browser and it's in in the um, in in Node.js too, but there's something called a call stack, and this is 
not specific to Node.js or JavaScript. It's programming languages have this, and this is kind of you can see where things happen, like what got called, what happened, and stuff, which is kind of neat. So like, I don't know. Say we have. Actually, let's let's just add something. So I'm gonna stop the debugger for a sec. Uh, okay, and I'm gonna say function hello again, and let's just do it in the loop. Okay, and I'm gonna debug this again. Okay, now let's. Put a breakpoint in there. I'm gonna run it. Okay, let's get rid of that breakpoint. We don't we don't need this other stuff. Let's remove log point. Okay, so I'm in the hello now. Now let's come over here and look. And it's like, okay, I see hello in the call stack because that's the current thing we're running in. And call stack's a whole other topic. Uh, feel free to Google it, but uh, it's something to get, to get familiar with. But basically, you can see here, it hello got called, but this got called first. So like it's it 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 shows you it's green here now. So it's saying okay, well the hello is actually called from within this loop here, uh, and this can be super helpful when you're trying to figure out where stuff is getting called from. Like obviously, you can search in the code and say like, I don't know, like say you have some click event happens and it, and it calls the hello, but like who knows? You have like twenty buttons on different places on the page or something. So you're not sure where it's getting called. Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and move your comment. Sorry there. Uh, still getting used to screen yard. Um, but this is super helpful because instead of like, you know, kind of traipsing through all the code to see like, where was hello called? If you are if you have a breakpoint in the hello right now, you can go, oh, okay, well, if I, if I click here in the stack and, and you can choose other places and stuff, there's some internal stuff here, which is Node.js. Um, you can hide those things. That's that's for another day, I guess. But uh, but this is just a faster way to know like what called my hello function, for example. So I find this super helpful. Now, there's a few other things here in the debugger. We can say stop on a pod exception. So I'm gonna check that off, and let's just come here and. Let's comment this out. And again, uh, if folks have questions, don't be shy. Feel free to ask. I'm just going to hide the debugger for a sec. So I'm going to just explicitly throw an error. Uh, OK, I'm going to save that. And then let's do this again. OK, it's going to run. Now, just remember, I've checked off caught exceptions. I'm going to say, or sorry, uncaught. I'm going to press F5. Oh, am I caught in a loop? There we go. Did it catch it? Oh, no, wait. It didn't. <laughs> uh, let's, see here. let's do this. Let's do try. And let's do this. And you would never really do this in code, probably. But there's two things. So, like, let's do it with a breakpoint first. So, run and debug. And let's run. Okay. The error got thrown, so it's in the catch here now, but I put an explicit breakpoint. Uh, yeah, yeah, caught exceptions are, are in there. Yeah, Stefan, yeah. This is super handy when you're not sure what's causing the error. So, like, obviously, when you're writing your code, you do have try catches and stuff. But let's, uh, let's run this without the breakpoint now. I'm going to run it again, and I'm going to say caught exception. So run and debug. This should stop. OK, yeah. So here you go. I've got a try catch, but because I checked off the pod exceptions, it goes, oh, I'm stopping right here. And this can be super helpful just because the the program is stopped. Like a lot of times, you'll get the error, and everything's just done. And this is just pointing to the file on my computer here, but this can be super helpful. Um, now let's try the uncaught exceptions. I don't know why I didn't catch it before, but uh, let's let this play. Okay. Uh, let's put it in our hello function, maybe. I don't know why. Maybe because I have it at the top level. Maybe that's why I wasn't catching it. But 
let's do this a function you should never write that uh, a function that that uh, you know throws an error but you know let's do it okay so we're gonna run it I have just again just I have uncaught exceptions checked off here and again to be clear I'm in VS code right now but these same options are available in the browser dev tools as well whether you're debugging front end code or Node.js. Uh, and also a side note, uh, we're not going to do today, but Dino, which is another uh, JavaScript runtime, it's built on V8 as well. So you can actually use the same debugging tools for Dino. That's just an aside. Uh, Bun, which is another runtime, is a little different, I think, because uh, it's using, I think it's called JavaScript or from uh, Safari, not Safari, from WebKit. So I'm not sure about the debugging story there. But, uh, anyways, that's just a little on the side there. OK, so let's run the program. And it should stop on uncaught exception, I think. OK, maybe the demo gods aren't with me today here. Uh, oh, I think it's because maybe I just have to make an explicit error. I, uh, like, like, I don't know. Let's do this, maybe. Um, hello. Dot uh, to non existent. To be clear, that function doesn't exist. So let's try that. It might be this. Uh, okay, let's run it. Uh, I don't want to run it again. Okay. Okay. I'm not sure about the non exceptions. It's not great. But that's just another option to be a bugger. Okay, so we're still in VS Code and this is super cool that we can use the debugger and stuff. Um, it can involve a little ceremony doing that or or even doing what I was showing you before, which was running node inspect, for example. Um, VS Code has a really cool feature, which is, so I'm in ZSC right now for my shell. Um, this should be, okay, you can't, you can't see this because it's a native uh, context menu. But when I click the down arrow here beside the plus in the VS Code uh, terminal uh, pane, there's options like choose ZSH, Bash, but there's another one called JavaScript Debug Terminal. Now, the cool thing about this one is you don't need to do anything to start the debugger. You just say like node index.js, like we're just running it like normal. And then all of a sudden, like all that strapping for the debugging experience is handled by VS Code because you're using the JavaScript debug term. Now we're just in a plain um, you know index.js file like but let's do something that might be more realistic. So let's stop here and uh, I'm gonna go down a folder uh, or actually do we have the package JSON here? Oh yeah okay this is from the React app I was working before. So we have some scripts here. I, I'm going to add another script here. And uh, let me just put in here. Uh, uh, demo, doesn't matter what it's called. Let me just close this for a sec just so folks can see. And this is just an FDM script. And I'm going to actually just say node index.js. So let's save that. And Let's uh, come back up here in my index.js. I'm going to get rid of the error here. I'm just console.log. Hello. Uh, thank you, Copilot. So, uh, we'll just go with hello, not hello world, even though you really want me to. OK. So let's come back to here. And I'm going to go back to ZSH for a minute. And I'm just going to run npm run demo, which is going to run the, the the file I wrote there, the index.js. So it just outputted uh, from the console log. That's great. If I come back to the JavaScript debug terminal, again, like I said, I can do node index.js and the debugger kicks in, and I can debug and do all that. The neat thing is the JavaScript debug terminal will attach the debugger to anything that's running. So, so I can say npm run uh, demo. 
And then all of a sudden, I'm running an NPM script. I don't have to set up the debugger or anything. I'm just all of a sudden, like the, the magic sauce in VS Code said, okay, well, we know you want to use the debugger. So anytime some kind of Node.js process is running, we're going to attach the debugger. And this is typically how I do uh, Node.js debugging in VS Code. And I, I almost always use VS Code for debugging in Node.js. Um, I think the only time I would probably use the browser uh, tools these days is if maybe I was in a log cabin without my normal setup and I only had like notepad.exe and uh, the browser maybe, but but it's it's pretty rich. And this is VS Code, I'm a fan of it. So it's free open source, but like if you're using something like WebStorm, uh, like I said, they have built-in Node.js debugging capabilities, but I'm not sure if they have this concept of the JavaScript debug term. Um, for folks that use WebStorm, if you are aware of it, just uh, let us know in the comments or you know, drop a message later. Um, cool, cool. All right, we've got about nine minutes left. Uh, okay, here's a question from uh, Stefan. Uh, do they mock Node or something? Um, I don't know for sure, but I think what happens is they're monitoring processes that are running and if they see a node process runs, because like you could have, like if you're running a build or something, multiple node processes might start up. Pretty sure the Japanese terminal just goes like, you know, add the debugger to each of those ones. Um, how it does that is not positive, but there's probably like some, abstraction layer maybe when run the uh, javascript debug terminal to do that uh oh yeah no we like the real nerd stuff though. that's all good it's, it's a great question uh, i i, I would really kind of like to know uh, though exactly how um okay so yeah we've got about eight minutes left here so we've been showing how you can debug several of these in uh, vs code here now the other thing I wanted to show you is, uh, and you can see here, this is the running debug uh, panel. So that's this panel here. It's this uh, bug with the, like a play button. Again, you can access it by uh, Shift X if you're on Mac. Um, if you're on Linux, it's Control Shift X. Again, though, if you change your keyboard mappings, it might not be that. But um, so we have all these things and able to debug. So say create a launch file, and then I'm gonna pick up JS here, and I'm gonna just close a bunch of stuff here because uh, okay. So this is something that uh, VS Code offers, and you can have just different configurations. So let's see here. Uh, this one just allows you to specify like okay, the index.js. Uh, there's some special variables in here like workspace for it, like my current project I'm in. Um, so this is one way to do it. Um, there's some interesting things here as well. You can decide to skip some files. So for example, say you're, I'm not going to run this now, but basically it's going to start the debugger again. It's just a way to start it. Um, the way we were doing it is just uh, not the JavaScript terminal, but the previous way where I was touching the debugger. Uh, VS Code decides on sensible defaults, which I believe is pretty much this. Um, but this is interesting because you could say like, here it's saying skip Node.js and terminals because depending on what you're debugging, you might end up into weird stuff in Node.js itself. But say you're working with like a, a library, like, I don't know, Axios, and you're debugging, uh, I don't really use Axios, I use Fetch generally, but whatever method, Axios, if you like simply debug or step into, and then all of a sudden, this like node modules code for this particular uh, library. It's not something you really care about. You don't want to go in there. That's not helping your debug experience. So you can just add things. In. So you can say like modules, you can skip all of node modules. You can say skip a specific one. Um, and there's that you can do in the browser debugging tools too. I'll uh, just show that real quickly. Oh, got my time check. We got five minutes. Okay. 
Uh, let's go into the browser debug tools here. Where is it? Uh, I'm just going to back here for a sec just so I can actually see everything. Give you one sec here. Uh, I'll, I'll zoom back in in a second. I just got to find the spot. Uh, uh, ignore list. Okay, there we go. Of course, it's not. Okay. Uh, boom, 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 boom. Let's try this again. Ignore this. So if you're in your debug tools, uh, dev tools, sorry, you can add an list here too. So like, say you don't want it stepping into like framework code, like React or something. You can basically create regular expressions to say like, I want to be able to step my code, but like I don't care about like some of these libraries. I don't, it, it's not important to my debugging experience. So you can also just add things here. Like you know, people were using jQuery; they used to do this, you know, and just add it um, because they didn't care about stepping in that. <clears throat> so there's that. Um, so I just wanted to show that contrasting it to like in VS Code here. Um, the other thing here is it's out of kind of out of scope of what we're talking about today, but you can have different configurations. So um, you can attach to Chrome, which is kind of nice. So like you can uh, say, say we refresh our, our app, I can just say attach to Chrome immediately, um, which means like, even though I didn't have like debugging set up, if I open up the dev tools and then I run uh, attach to Chrome, all of a sudden you can be debugging your browser code within VS Code, um, that's that's another thing. And again, it's it's the same experience with the dev tooling. It's just, it's, if you're a fan of VS Code, or I'm pretty sure WebStorm does this too, um, you can just, it's just a different experience, right? You know, uh, my dream still is to kind of have VS Code and the dev tools of the browser, but uh, maybe that'll happen one day. Um, anyways, um, we got a few minutes left here, so, um, just see if there's any other questions before we kind of wrap it up here. Um, and I just wanted to mention too, so you can attach to other browsers like Edge. You can also attach to Node directly. There's, there's many ways, but getting back to what I was saying before, I typically use the JavaScript debug term these days, but there's all kinds of things in here. And if you have other uh, languages and stuff, like for example, Rust or you know, even C Sharp, use the same debugging experience. It's just different for that particular language, but you have access to a lot of the same tools. So just kind of wanted to mention that there. Um, let's see what else. Um, yeah, so there's that. And the thing is, you can save this file. Uh, yeah, it's a topic for the next episode. Um, that's a good question. Uh, I didn't discuss it with Brian yet, but I was thinking of maybe, you know, because the whole point of were uh, kind of what we discussed is it, it, I like the name to full two stack, but um, it's kind of touching on web topics that people might not have covered. And I know you're a fan of like raw stuff, uh, stuff and, you know, like about the frameworks and stuff. I was thinking of doing a deep dive maybe for the next stream into forms, you know, like there's a lot of things in forms, a uh, little teaser for folks, um, you know, like people who've been doing React. For example, there's like all these form libraries to like let me get the state of what's in the form and stuff. But there's there's already web APIs that do all this stuff for you. For example, like there's a form data class. Um, there's a dot form property available on elements that are in a form. There's I, I don't want to give away too much, uh, but uh, I'll give a chat with uh, Brian. But I, I think that might be the next episode. Um, and the other thing is, I'm glad you asked that question, Stefan, because uh, folks in the chat uh, or even watching this recording later, if there's things you'd like me to live code or discuss, uh, you know, happy to do those. Um, but yeah, no, this has been super great. Um, just want to give a quick shout out to Brian and the CFE.dev team uh, for starting this with me. Uh, I'm really excited about this collaboration. So. Uh, I hope folks enjoyed today. Uh, I was a little clunky because it's my first time with uh, 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 StreamYard, but uh, I'll, I'll talk to Brian about tightening that up a bit. And yeah, uh, give me a follow to cf.dev if you haven't already. And uh, for myself, like I said, I'll just drop my links again. They're just there. 
Um, but you can give me a follow on all my socials if you'd like. Uh, I'd appreciate it. Um, I stream on Twitch if you want to give a follow over there too. You can check out my website, developer.com. There's all my links to the blogging, streaming, and socials. And yeah, that's pretty much it. We're at 2 o'clock on the dot. Thanks for hanging out, friends. And uh, we'll see you in the next one.